What is up, guys, and welcome to the Beyond Sanas channel. My name is Shanks, and today we are going to cast a 2v2 replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the page 2.2. This time on the map Bold between the white Isengard player Cecio, his ally, the top left red corner player Zemix, that against the yellow Rohan player Ericsson, and his ally bottom right is the orange Mordor player Mateusz 316. So Isengard against Mordor at the bottom side, and Gondor against Rohan at the top side. Evil against evil, good against good, but most importantly, all four factions are included in this 2v2 match, and we like those. Soldiers are taking some damage from the creeps, but they should be just fine. Playing aggro against Rohan as Gondor is a big mistake, because you can't really protect this against peasants, and Rohan should be able to you know, recruit additional peasants, have the Hobbit Mary around this location too, to protect your, himself against those soldiers. In the meantime, this is the best spot for, you know, for any player when you play on this map because you have those four settlements you can capture and that's exactly what Sisio does. I don't like to Uruk pit start, I like to start with a furnace and capture everything and go have like crazy eco at the beginning of the game. But Uruk pit will give you like the more early game presence and will give you the option to protect yourself a bit more properly. Mordor opening with an orc pit into the second orc pit and Gondor is now two blacksmiths in one farm inside the castle. There's also four settlements very soon, which means with the fa one, one farm inside the bees and four outside, or three outside, you will have a decent food bonus too. Mary has been sent offensively, and for that reason he can't really deal with those two soldiers. And Zemix is, you know, pinging this and saying, come, dude, let's go. We need to hurry up, we need to kind of shut down Mordor early game. Soldier hit level 2, heal is still available. That's gonna be a big W for Zemix. There comes Eye of Sauron from Mordor a bit too late. Gondor can still fight this. There is no need to disengage. The peasants are heavily damaged, and one of them is not even drafted. Without the, you know, without swords, they have no chance against well-trained soldiers of Gondor. Level 3 soldier. You know what? This is going to be a slaughter. <laughs> Where was Gondor when Rohan fell? Okay, good piece. But he's losing every single settlement. Where is the Hobbit from Zemix, actually? Oh, he was also using Hobbit offensively. This level 3 soldier is going to be so incredibly strong. Stable up on the field for Ericsson and also for Zemix. In the meantime, the beast from Isengard is looking phenomenal, okay? Whole base beside the last spot, which is being currently saved for the armory, you need Lords. Because the weakness of Gondor Isengard team is the lack of leadership. And for that reason, Lords is crucial. I would even suggest Boromir for Gondor. You know, you can use Boromir to creep this layer or this layer and get him easily to level 4 and put him next to your allies combos. So the Isengard combos will get the chance to deal 60% more damage, which is again going to be very important for Isengard to deal with Mordor later on. You need to deal with Nas, Goose, Witch King, you know, Trolls. And you need, you need definitely more leadership than only Warchant. Gondor going for the knight number 2. Using the first knight to creep this lair. It's gonna get them to level 2. No problemo. Rohan is going to use those Rohirrim to deal with the level 3 soldier. Mary from Ericsson is also doing a phenomenal job. And it looks like Zemix lost his Hobbit. Yeah, he lost his Hobbit. Otherwise, he could just cloak him here. And Mordor couldn't be able to recapture this. And he's creeping defensively. Isengard's eco is looking very good. He's going for the blades and armor. He wanna go for the rush, okay? He has indeed like a whole bunch of Uruks. <laughs> he has like five Uruks in total. But what he doesn't have are pikemen. And you need to have pikemen because you are playing against Rohan and he can trample you easily. Mordor in the meantime was able to creep this with the orcs and Haradrims. Will capture this outpost, put the Haradrims inside the outpost. So the outpost will have a great protection. And Gondor is creeping, you know, and I like this. You don't want to defend or destroy this farm at the beginning. You can do this later on. Creeping is so rewarding and for that reason so important in this game. But Isengard is coming, boys. Can Mordor defend this though? I don't know. Let me take a look into Mordor money. I don't think he's close to an... <laughs> yeah, he's not close to an Asgul by all means. But again, if Cecio, the white Isengard player, would have two pikemen to combine them with the Uruks, this push could legit destroy the whole castle of Mordor. But without this, the Rohirrim can be quite annoying to deal with. That comes the Warchant, 
Is IO ability available? The answer is yes. Some of them don't even have upgrades. There comes Eye of Sauron, the trample incoming, but the trample, of course, Theodin is a bit lead. You should be waiting for Theodin before going for the trample. Imagine, imagine Pikeman here, man. Eoma is coming too, lots of horses. Now it's gonna be a different story. They have Eye of Sauron leadership, Theodin leadership. They can get tanky with Theodin being around them. And Isengard won't achieve too much. I mean, he was still able to do a great amount of damage, but it could be so much better, you know? Imagine, dude. You know, normally I like the tempo and speed and every second matters, but in this situation, I would rather wait 10 more seconds or 15 more seconds for the Uruk's pikemen to come, or 25 seconds, and at least two of them, you know? And then this push could, I'm telling you, destroy the whole castle. But Rohan didn't only defend his ally, but also he got so many power points from it. And while this was happening, Mordor, of course, taking over the game, right? He has two outposts now, double orc pit. The pressure is going to be incredibly <laughs> annoying to deal with for Isengard player uh, CCO. Gondor, in the meantime, kind of losing the map control against Rohan. Rohan going for the late game with Eoma leadership. And again, the horses of Rohan are going to be so strong with Darkness Witch King later on. And if he gets Eoma to level 4, this will be almost doubled in strength. And Gondor horses can't match the Rohirrim. And Mordor is a turbo skilling faction, so with this match map, with this much map control, he can do multiple things sim simultaneously. He can go for the troll cage, recruit trolls, save up for a Nazgul, go for the Witch King, and you have the chance to have three flying heroes, which will 100% guarantee map control. Mordor building up a tower. The Haradrims will get trampled by the Gondor Knights. They are war chanted, as you can see and tell. Horse heroes are generally tanky against horses. So you can see even with Warchant, Yoma and Theorin can kind of tank this quite a bit. Mordor is just annoying with the massive amount of orcs. And for it, look at the minimap, okay? That's that's like a good uh, you know, way to keep to keep track with the game speed. And Isengard is kind of forced to go for the orcs. Lords super delete. Basically, no more creeps left on this map, so not easy way for them to level up. And by the time he comes. There are multiple upgraded Rohirrim upon the field, including uh, Eoma level 3 and Theoden level 2. No more creeps here. I mean, every, okay, every creep is gone. An outpost will actually be protected. So Gondor and Isengard are present in their own castles. And that's a horrible spot to be. Lords has been recruited. The Vorks are actually dealing with the, you know, Mordor, Orc spam. But that's gonna be changed once, you know, Mordor is able to recruit a Nazgul. Eye of Sauron. This outpost could be should be captured by Rohan, in my opinion. So Rohan get a, this a second outpost with like three farms on it, because you need a lot of money with Rohan. You need archer range later on. You need fire arrows. You need Rohir marches. All of that costs so much money. Oh, oh! You don't want to ride into them. Gripple, 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 gripple. Oh, too late. Oh, he crippled him. Oh, Theory King. Is riding into the bike, man. Elma, what a big mistake! And Lourdes even got level 3 out of this. Beautiful play from Isengard player Sisio. I mean, he made a big mistake like a few minutes ago. He had the chance to legit win the game. There comes the Warchan on the Gondor Knights. Rohirrim have lost all their heroes, and this will be the end of this outpost, definitely. Yes, even the, the Great Company special summon Mordor taking care of this outpost with the Oryx level 2. I mean, they will be able to destroy this eventually, but the tower is going to be able to deal with this Oryx, no problemo. The outpost is going down to Goblin Town. Troll Cage, one more troll required, actually two more trolls required for the Troll Cage to hit level 2. Risengard has industry on his furnace in the front. Warp Pit, he has recruited only two walk riders, so needs to make combos. He needs firepower, because Mordor, trust me on that one, is about to get a Nazgul upon the field very, very soon. He has 2.5 key, but this money is gonna skyrocket to the sky, okay? Like, it's gonna jump very soon up to 6,000, 7,000, 8,000 for a potential chance to skip the Nazgul and straight up rush the Witch King. Okay, the Grey Company uh, is gone, so th there is nothing that can deal with the trolls, so making the base rush pretty much impossible. It's still possible you can outrun the trolls, but of course. 
it's easier said than done. There comes the Elven Summon into the Trampolis. They are immediately drawing the sword to get immunity to trample, but Tyrion King has been crippled. Lourdes can and shall draw the sword, but he doesn't do it. The Elves, he's killing the Elves with Lourdes, and the Pikes, they killed the Tyrion. Lords hitting very hard. There comes the darkness on the Rohirrim with the leadership of the Eye of Sauron combined. But Lords is zooming with the help of Palantio. He's gonna get in safety just barely. It's a horrible fight for Gondor and Isengard team. And trolls are coming to open a potential window. And if you don't know, darkness actually gives leadership to Ants too. And so is the Drummer Troll. So Drummer Troll is able to make Ants stronger. And you can combine this with Drummer Troll Darkness and then the Ants can also have the leadership from Treebeard and then the powerful creatures of the Fangon Forest are going to be even more powerful so Isengard has to bring army but it looks like he doesn't like to combine them which is okay I believe because you can get faster to this location this way but this is looking just wrong <laughs> this looks so wrong from Isengard Saruman has been recruited, Fireball is available, Elma is gonna be safe, he's gonna cancel the bomb tongue, there is nothing to hit, the Ants are coming. The last march of the Ants begin. The last march of the Ants shall begin. Does Isengard have rain? Yes, the rain should be using it, there comes the Fireball, but the Ant didn't catch fire. Lords can cripple or use carnage. He's gonna draw the sword and he's chunking those ants. He's destroying those ants, showing them their place and getting to level 5. On Lords, like basically, carnage is like a magic damage and you can melt the ants with this. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. The horses, on the other hand, they don't have that much chance to do this the same. Uh, we have nerfed uh, the ants' armor against melee heroes. That means even Boromir could actually be a great. Uh, hero, even though Lourdes I and mean, Boromir won't take them down as fast as Lourdes can. The trolls, Mordor has crazy map control. He has over 5,000, we can see that. He has 7.4k. So the Witch King is going to be joining the, joining the battlefield very, very soon. Gondor has no Ganoff, but he's saving for him. He has 3.5k. Ganoff is, of course, a great hero against those trolls and against the Nazgul and Witch King, but also against Theodin, Ilma, Horses. Like Gandalf is basically like a magical solution to all your problems. He's indeed able to attack everything. On the ground, in the sky, on the sea, nothing can escape the mighty Gandalf of the White Wizards. And we will have two wizards upon the fields. There comes Aragorn with the Anduri Sword. Very tanky hero. Four power points for Gondor after the Great Company and heal. But keep in mind that two of them will be invested into the Gandalf the White Power Point from the Spellbook. Uh, Isengard player has. Two power points after the freezing rain. The outpost will be safe for now. I mean, basically, Gondor has zero farms, but his outpost with two farms here. So he needs to reclaim these two settlements. Isengard took even this one from him. We have even the runes upon the field. Doing a great job against the Gondor Knights, but there are two heroes with leadership provide providing to the knights of gondor with lots of elves he didn't go for them okay so rain has to be activated what is this army from isengard why is he making uruks against trolls in witch king he's holding the rain too legolas getting level three trample 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 no pike man what a big punishment aragorn has been crippled rain has been activated the the Vorks are going into the into the elves. The Witch King is taking care of the Knights of Gondor too. Aragorn is still alive. Killing him won't be that easy. But the army of Isengard has so much damage, so much leadership that he, they were able to take down the King of the Men of the West. But the two Rohan heroes, Elma level 4, Thurin level 3, are gonna get in safety. The Isengard player with the magical button, the freezing green, was still able to win this. Witch King is flying into safety just in time to dodge the wizard Gandalf the White. Outpost control has been taken by the White Hand, the Saruman player Sisio. Still no rangers. I, I would, you know, let me take a look into the money from Gondor, Zemix. So he's kind of poor, kind of makes sense. He should get this outpost for himself, right? He should build a well statue so his ally is going to be even stronger. And at some point, he definitely should recruit Faramir and also Boromir. Very important. So you can put basically your Boromir next to Lourdes 
and he needs only one level but this one level he needs will make him so incredibly strong but this Isengard army looks so wrong man he has like two crossbow men two and a half that's all the range damage he's having when they're running into the towers too I mean he has like lots of melee damage that's good he can have a lot of structural damage that's even better but Mordor is a couple of crossbow men coming from this location too Mordor's Witch King is I think back to full HP they are pressuring the outpost from Isengard and protected uh, glorious charge not available but Witch King is healthy however there is a Saruman that can fire you and a Ganoth that can Easter you so that's like Avada Kedavra basically against Witch King that chunks him you know look at the troll darkness pain is still on cooldown keep in mind killing this troll is so painful for Isengard because he has almost no firepower there comes the elven summon from Rohan. The, the beast from Mordor is getting crushed. Avada Kedavra <laughs> is uh, looking for it. Boom. But they don't even die anymore. They have Witch King leadership and Drama Troll and Darkness. They are so tanky and so strong. You had heal all the time. Why didn't you use it? The elven damage hitting incredibly hard. They are going for the structures. Can they somehow destroy the Mordor castle? It's been holy moly fully destroyed. But guess what? Mordor, with this much map control, is so rich that he can buy this castle two times. Okay, he has five, he needs five thousand, he has ten in the bank. And Mordor will be easily able to reclaim. But Isengard has lost everything. And Gondor, and that's the worst thing ever, losing his Gandalf with heal being available too. 5 power points for Gondor, 15 power points for Sisio. He's getting closer to the Balrog special summon. Ericsson, the Rohan player, has 4 power points. He's only 6 power points away from his own army of the dead. And of course, last but not least, Mateusz, 316, the modern player. He needs 10 power points for his Balrog. So the closest player is actually Sisio. And I think he got more power points from losing stuff than from killing stuff. He needs to make sure to combine this Uruks with the crossbow man. He finally did one combo. Remember, he lost everything. So Lourdes has to be revived. That's going to take a long time. He's level 6. That means 2 minutes revive time. Ganov has been killed too. Ganov was only level 6. So it's going to take you 2 minutes and 30 seconds. The more expensive a hero is, the more punishment there is going to be when it comes to revive time. Rohan is a level 3 farm behind the castle of Gondor. That's how rich, you know... Rohan is. Mordor has multiple outposts. One, two, three, four outposts. Five outposts in total. Right? One, two, three, okay, four, four outposts. But the elves level 10. Aragorn leadership, Tyrion leadership, Drama Troll leadership, Witch King leadership. Let's okay. I mean, this is looking so strong. Look at their firepower. Look at their range. They have also regular leadership, right? Yeah, they do. So let's count. Okay, 20%. 70 70%. 100%. 150%. 200%. 0%. <laughs> Rain is been activated. All the leadership gone. Beautiful. Getting to the sword mode, which makes them immune to trample. And they are fast, too. They can outrun the combos of Isengard. But more... Oh, Mifrandi is coming. But we have the White Rider. We have the White Rider. They're gonna, they're gonna turn and... Oh, oh, oh! Canceling it? Oh! Do it! Do it! <laughs> Legolas melting him in the meantime. Legolas melting him in the meantime. Oh, Amada Kadavra on the Witch King. Arago! <laughs> Dude, the two hunters, Aragorn and Legolas, were just hard focusing down the Gandalf. <laughs> he couldn't achieve anything. Nice micro from Ericsson. He actually got away with the elves too. He'd never give him the chance to blast them. Because he knew, rain is active, I have no armor leadership, so if he blasts me, I will die. It was a good micro. 17 power points for Isengard, but I think Rohan was able to catch up. He was able to catch up indeed. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice over here. Two and a half power points to get to the AOD. You know, Legolas level 5, Aragorn level almost 7, but most importantly, a level 10 Elwin Warrior Battalion. Okay, this 
is big. This is big. Now play almost available. Remember, Rain is about to be off. And then this army of Rohan or the army of Lothlorien or whatever you want to call it will be unstoppable. This looks like an Elven army with like a bit spot of Rohan and Gondor. Like normally Gondonite should counter the fire damage. With the shields, they should take almost no damage. But that's not a normal situation over here. It's like maxed out firepower. With darkness, it's gonna be even greater. So again, we were it, we were counting, right? So 50, 80, 100 from the three Rohan heroes. 150, 200. Plus I, 250. Plus this, 283% damage leadership. You know what it means? It's like a times, not like plus. It's times. This is what it means. That even a lord gets one shot. It legit. Look, they are melting. Oh, Palantir! Oh! <laughs> There is one more thing that can counter your leadership. The biggest creature of Battle for Middle Earth 1. Dude, Aragorn is trying to run. Swords are no more useful here, Aragorn. Whip is on cooldown. Two of the Elven combos, actually, Elven level 10 survived. But can they get away from the Maya? Witch King can also get be one shotted by this whip, by the way. Ignite whip and he's gonna die. But he's trying to save this level 10 combos. Now he's actually going for the outpost. Knocking down the drummer troll on the ground. Actually, elves, they were able to survive. Three battalions are still alive. Witch King got whipped. I was a cadaverat. Outpost has been demolished, but that's gonna be the last action from Balrog. Look can of health, okay? Look can of health. If he approaches this level 10, I mean, actually, maybe not, because Drama Troll is far away. He's gonna use Easter on the Drama Troll and kill him. Drama has been slain, that's good. But Rohan has still a lot of leadership in each level. Keep in mind, he's making them percentage wise also stronger. So, one of them, two of them being level 10, they are already like five times stronger than the level 1 unit is gonna be. Besides the leadership bonuses they got. But he lost Theodin, Elma. Elma is also good, actually, because you might say, yeah, but Elma doesn't have leadership for elves. It's true, but he gives you outlaw leadership, which means you can get money for killing stuff. We have a lot of money, and he's re recruiting two Nazgûl simultaneously. He has still 5,000. Zemix, the Gunner player, is potentially the poorest player in this game, but he also went for the marketplace. That's going to be quite helpful. Level 3, Blacksmiths, few of them at least. And uh, plus, the marketplace will give you a lot of money and value. And he still needs almost seven power points, six and a half, to get EOT. And CCO has four power points. He has also lots of money. He can go for the devastation if he wants to. And Ericsson has EOT. So Ericsson is far away, uh, far ahead of his direct opponent, the Gunner player, Zemix. But also he has the support of Mordor. Let's not forget this, okay? Boromir on level three. That's why you need to recruit him later on. Like in 2v2 games, 2v2s generally last longer than one v ones and for that reason you need to invest into your late game power early game so you want to recruit boromir a bit earlier farami a bit earlier if farami gets some levels on him he can chunk this dude like warning arrow will make him lose 50 percent of his health now maybe you know it might be too late but also warning arrow is very good against theorin for example very good against Trolls, very good against Drummer Troll, very good against Witch King. I mean, not very good against Witch King, but against normal Nazgûl, it's very strong too. But, of course, he also provides you armor leadership. So, this dude, this dude, imagine this one, the Four Gondor ability. I see, I hear the army of the dead. Yeah, he's going for the... It was a mistake, in my opinion, okay? Now, he should not use AOD here to begin with. There is no need. The army wasn't strong to achieve anything. There are two Nazgûls, and you could just come back. That's a very mobile army. You want to use EOD in this situation in which you are attacking, killing his army, and then finishing him. But I'm wondering how are you supposed to defend against that? Balrog is on cooldown. EOD is gone. Where is Gandalf at? Gandalf is somewhere. Rain has to be activated. The only way I can see that coming is Rain Blast. Rain Blast. He doesn't use the Rain, and he's gonna die. A little bit of a mess in the communication department should use the rain 
and Gondor shouldn't use the land. So that's like the worst possible outcome ever. Why? He got even leadership back. So what happened? Oh my, we need to analyze this. What happened? Gondor went for an incredible risky play. So he wanted to go blast land. So he did that. He died immediately because he was too late with it. And by the time he comes and uses Elven Wood, Gennaf dies. So then, after he used land, Isengard used rain after Gennaf died. And Mordor covered this. Which means Elves were able to get leadership back. Like, not only they lost Saruman and Gennaf, but they also gave as a present, as a early Christmas present, the Rohan player, and donated them all the leadership bonuses. Now the damage these units are dealing is legit AOD damage. Zemix will leave the game. I like it's nice to see elves in action. But Isengard had the chance to win this game. In the meantime, by the way, <laughs> we have Ents summoned, Ents recruited. The Gondor is being sieged. The Ents are going to war. Isengard Castle has been fully and completely destroyed and demolished. He's about to lose his outpost too. This outpost is also going down. Gondor Castle is all what is left to the Isengard player. You can see. You can see Gondor player uh, heroes because he left the game. Faramir has been recruited way too late. Boromir has been recruited way too late. Isengard made a mess that army with Uruk's pikemen and then crossbowmen solo. And Rain. I mean, Rain Blast from Gandalf has also like a crazy damage potential. But then the communication is very important. Boromir actually got the kill on the on the end. The final level 4, at least at the end of the game. But there is nothing from Isengard. He has money, though. I mean, don't get me wrong. He has money. He has 10,000 in the bank. He's not poor by all means, right? Matthias also has almost EOD. He's like one and a quarter away from getting to the... I mean, Balrog, sorry. The ends are throwing rocks. Go for three beer, dude. Aragorn is almost level 10, by the way. A witch king approaches. But we have to fight wizard. No, we don't. We don't. I know what Isengard player is planning to do. You also know, right? You also know it. I know it. You know it. He, she, it knows it. You want to just go for the final big move. There comes the Palantir. He's waiting for it, but I think it might be too late. He's going for it. It might be too late. To lead. <laughs> like 10 seconds earlier. Oh, two Balrogs. <laughs> one belongs to Isengard. The other one belongs to Aragorn's damage. Aragorn is melting him. Aragorn level 9. I'm telling you. Not a joke. Not a joke. This man. He's going to get level 10 after this one too. And he killed him. Aragorn, the Balrog Slayer, summoning the EOT to the end of this game. GG well played. Good game. I mean, Isengard could have played this way better. And the communication between Isengard and... I mean, they were behind. But the most ironic part is they had like the chance to win this game. Telling you, in the final move, EOD from Rohan was used. It was on cooldown. Ganaf is approaching. You as Isengard need to watch and see it coming. Use Rain. So your allies kind of can go in, blast, and get like four power points collected. Low key. And get AOD maybe even unlocked from your spellbook. Anyways, did you have played up you guys enjoyed this one? If you did, you know what to do. Leave a like, subscribe. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a track. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, stay beyond silence. Peace out, boys.